Welcome to an introduction video on first order active filters. So first we're going to have a look at the filter types that we have and what's the purpose of a filter. Then we're going to look at the low pass, the high pass and the wide band filter. So the purpose of a filter is to get rid of frequencies. So you can have complex signals and you perhaps don't want the higher frequency in here or the lower frequency in this specific time frame. Okay, so we use filters to get rid of whatever we want. We do get higher order filters than the first order, but that is an entire different video series. And the higher order filters works better than the first order. Gets rid of frequencies much better. Okay, now we are going to talk a lot about time and frequency domain. Down here we have a time domain representation. And time domain representations can get quite complex if you're working with a lot of frequencies. So for that, we will typically jump over to a frequency domain. So to describe a time signal better, we can use FFTs in the simulation software. So on the next slide, I will show you FFT. And to describe the filter, we will use a bode plot. Okay, so here in the background, I have a complex signal, which is a 100 hertz, a 1 kilohertz, and a 10 kilohertz signal that is being combined with different amplitudes. And it is quite difficult to distinguish what's going on. So if we do a FFT, we can see that there is a peak sitting at 100 hertz, a peak sitting at 1 kilohertz, and a peak sitting at 10 kilohertz right here. The 1 kilo has the highest amplitude, then the 10k, and then the 100 ohm. So to represent time signals, we can have a look at the FFT. So... This is quite complex and doesn't give us enough information. The FFT provides more information. Now, in terms of filters, we can get rid of these in specific ways. So, one slide over, the filter types that we have is the low pass filter, the high pass filter, the band pass filter, which I will explain on this. FFT here in a moment. Those are the three main types that we're going to have a look at in this small series. And for the band pause, especially the wide band. Okay, let's start on the top. The low pass filter is a filter that only passes low frequencies. Okay, so anything here from this range. Downwards. So a low pass filter could be typically something that is a block over here, right? So the 100 hertz can pass and the 10k and the 1k will be attenuated. A high pass filter is something that only passes the high frequencies. Okay, so the 1k, the 100 hertz will be attenuated and the 10 kilohertz will be standing out. A band pass filter is a filter that only allows a certain bandwidth of frequencies to pass through. So it is a combination of a low pass and the high pass filter. Okay. For first orders, we can only do wideband filters. If we want to do narrowband filters, that is higher order um, filters. And they are when you want to isolate the frequency or a very narrow bandwidth. We can't do that with first order filters. 
Okay. A band reject filter is a filter that can get rid of a certain bandwidth. So basically, if we continue this low pass into the high pass up here, we can have a hundred hertz and the one kilo, uh, the ten kilohertz passing, but not this bit in the between with the one kilohertz. Okay. And the notch filter is something that can get rid of a single frequency. Okay, so filters, their names basically describes exactly what they do. Low pass, only low will pass. High pass, only high will pass. Band pass, you get, you get the picture. Okay, so we will be looking at the low pass, the high pass, the band pass specifically a wide band filter right now we will do this in three different videos for each one of these with designs and simulations so let's quickly go over the three filters that we will be discussing with specifics to bode plots okay now, a bode plot is also frequency domain description, but it describes what the filter does exactly. Okay, the FFT tells us more about the signal. So we have a component sitting at 100 hertz, a component sitting at 1 kilohertz, and a component sitting at 10 kilohertz. Right. So. A first order low pass filter, we have a bode plot. Okay, so here at the low frequencies, we can see that there is 20 dBs described here. Okay, so that is the gain of our filter. So the lower frequencies will be amplified, and anything beyond this minus 3 decibel point, that is where we measure our filter's cut off frequency is 3 dBs down from this pass band gain, which is for 20 dBs. This one was designed for 1.3 kilohertz. Okay, so anything below this, or above this frequency rather, is being attenuated. Okay, first order filters will attenuate with minus 20 decibels per decade. So the further you move away, or in this direction, the more signals will be attenuated. So for every decade, so 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, that is a decade, a signal will be attenuated with minus 20 decibels more. Okay, so going this way, it will be attenuated more and more and more until the signal disappears. So frequency after our cutoff frequency doesn't immediately disappear. It takes a while. Okay, so at higher frequencies we will see less. Okay, anything in the pass band will be amplified equally. So this minus 3 dB point is true for all, all filters and any order. You measure this at minus 3 dB no matter what kind of filter you're using or what order. Okay, minus 20 decibels per decade is the roll off here for first order filters. For the second order filter, this will be minus. 40 for the third order minus 60 so it's basically this minus 20 multiplied by the order of the filter okay so important things of a boat plot is the pass band gain the cut off frequency which is measured at minus 3 db so in this case it's measured at 17 decibels and then this cut off right of our filter. Okay, so this is what the boat plot will look, look like for our low pass filter. 
So for the high pass filter, we have exactly the same setup. It's just flipped over. Okay, and this line climbs with 20 decibels per decade up until this minus 3 dB point, which is our cut off frequency for this filter. And then we kind of stabilize here at the pass band gain until infinity for anything that's ideal. But we know our op amp also has a cut off frequency at some point, so this thing will cut off at a later stage. Okay, so a high pass filter only passes high frequencies. All the lower frequencies will be suppressed. Then we have a wideband filter. Okay. We have a bandwidth in between around our design and we will talk more about the specifics that I have up here with a wideband filter video. But you can see that we have a cut off on both sides of our design frequency. Okay, so this is when you only want one frequency left of the free in our signal. Right, so in the video series I'm going to be using, let's go to this one which is still nice, we're going to be using this signal that I have here and we are going to apply different filters to it. So we're going to play around with two low pass filters, we're going to play around with two high pass filters and we are going to do one wideband filter around the one kilohertz signal. Okay, and that is it for the introduction to filters. It is to get rid of unwanted frequencies. And I hope to see you in the next three videos on the three filter types that we have planned out. So the low pass, in the high pass and in the wideband bandpass filter. Thank you for watching.